We typically think of ballet as harmonious, graceful, and polished, hardly features that would trigger a riot. But at the first performance of Igor Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring, audience members were so outraged that they drowned out the orchestra. Accounts of the event include people hurling objects at the stage, challenging each other to fights, and getting arrested, all on what started as a sophisticated night at the ballet. First performed in May 1913 at the Théâtre des Champs-Élysées in Paris, The Rite of Spring is set in prehistoric times. The narrative follows an ancient pagan community worshiping the earth and preparing for the sacrifice of a woman intended to bring about the change of seasons. But the ballet is much more concerned with the violent relationship between humans, nature, and culture than with character or plot. These themes manifest in a truly upsetting production which combines harsh music, jerky dancing, and uncanny staging. It opens with dancers awakening to a solo bassoon, playing in an eerily high register. This gives way to discordant strings punctured by unexpected pauses while the dancers twitch to the music. These frightening figures enact the ballet's brutal premise, which set audiences on edge and shattered the conventions of classical music. In these ways and many more, the Rite of Spring challenged the orchestral traditions of the 19th century. Composed on the cusp of both the First World War and the Russian Revolution, the Rite of Spring seethes with urgency. This tension is reflected in various formal experiments, including innovative uses of syncopation, or irregular rhythm, atonality, or the lack of a single key, and the presence of multiple time signatures. Alongside these strikingly modern features, Stravinsky Stravinsky spliced in aspects of Russian folk music, a combination that deliberately disrupted the expectations of his sophisticated urban audience. This wasn't Stravinsky's first use of folk music. Born in a small town outside of St. Petersburg in 1882, Stravinsky's reputation was cemented with the lush ballet, The Firebird. Based on a Russian fairy tale, this production was steeped in Stravinsky's fascination with folk culture. But he plotted a wilder project in the Rite of Spring, pushing folk and musical boundaries to draw out the rawness of pagan ritual. Stravinsky brought this reverie to life in collaboration with artist Nicholas Rorik. Rorik was obsessed with prehistoric times. He had published essays about human sacrifice and worked on excavations of Slavic tombs, in addition to set and costume design. For the Rite of Spring, he drew from Russian medieval art and peasant garments to create costumes that hung awkwardly on the dancers' bodies. Rorik set them against vivid backdrops of primeval nature, full of jagged rocks, looming trees, and nightmarish colors. Along with its dazzling sets and searing score, the original choreography for the Rite of Spring was highly provocative. This was the doing of legendary dancer Vaslav Najinsky, who developed dances to rethink the roots of movement itself. Although Stravinsky later expressed frustration with Najinsky's demanding rehearsals and single-minded interpretations of the music, his choreography proved as pioneering as Stravinsky's composition. He contorted traditional ballet to both the awe and horror of his audience, many of whom expected the refinement and romance of the genre. The dancing in the Rite of Spring is agitated and uneven, with performers cowering, writhing, and leaping about as if possessed. Often, the dancers are not one with the music, but rather seem to struggle against it. Najinsky instructed them to turn their toes inwards and land heavily after jumps, often off the beat. For the final frenzied scene, a woman dances herself to death to loud bangs and jarring strings, the ballet ends abruptly on a harsh, haunting chord. Today, the Rite of Spring remains as chilling as its controversial debut, but the shockwaves of the original work continue to resound and inspire. You can hear Stravinsky's influence in modern jazz's dueling rhythms, folky classical music, and even film scores for horror movies, which still elicit a riotous audience response. In the third act of Swan Lake, the black swan spins on one pointed foot 32 times. Find out the physics behind the hardest move in ballet in this video.